Hi everyone, Terrible Dactyl here, and welcome to another episode of Jurassic Plastic. Today I wanted to take a look at uh, the Carnegie Collection Parasaurolophus. This is really a classic model, uh, and Safari got a, a lot of mileage out of this particular model, this particular sculpt, in you know from the late 1980s all the way up through 2015. And I wanted to take uh, just a very quick tour through some of the different versions of this model that exist. Uh, different paint schemes, slightly different uh, sculpts that they've come out with, and just kind of uh, take a, a brief look at, at tracing some of the little changes uh, that occurred through the line. Um, I happen to have a lot of different versions of the Carnegie Parasaurolophus. It's probably one of the easiest uh, to come by Carnegie models today, at least some of the versions are. Um, you can find them, they're very plentiful on eBay. Um, you can get them in lots, you can get them individually for not too much money. Um, so I have some that I had uh, when I was younger, and I also have some that I've bought more recently, just that kind of were tossed into lots and things like that. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to trace some of the more general changes that we can find in Carnegie Collection models using Parasaurolophus as sort of a case study uh, on those changes that really could apply to most of the different Carnegie models that started out in 1988. So we're going to start our look at the Carnegie Parasaurolophus with what uh, I believe may be the original one. I'm not 100% sure about this, but this is definitely the oldest model that I have. And this, um, you can see, is the first generation Parasaurolophus, which I featured in my first gen Carnegie primer video. It's actually a very unique model. I kind of like the first generation color scheme um, a little bit better than I do the second and even maybe third generation color scheme. It's very simple, but um, like a lot of the first generation models, the paint is really just applied here in more of a wash so that it goes in between the cracks and crevices of all these little sculpted details like the scales and ridges along the back. Uh, and it just gives it that really cool weathered appearance, um, a little bit more naturalistic looking um, and it really highlights the sculpt a lot better than some of the later models do. You can see there are actually two different kinds of paint used on this model. There's that really matte, um, not shiny at all, not glossy at all, uh, wash over the whole body, over the face, and then up here on the crest we've got this really glossy paint and there's yellow glossy paint on the back and brownish uh, glossy paint on the front. And you can see that this paint is more prone to um, chipping and peeling off of the base rubber. And I do mean rubber like I showed in my previous video. This thing is incredibly rubbery. I have seen examples uh, online of the Parasaurolophus first generation that seem to lack the brown on this. Um, just having that same base beigeous off-white color there. Um, and possibly even lacking this glossy yellow, but that could just be because the the pictures are not the best quality. Um, but it does have that yellow paint here, brown paint there, uh, yellow or dark orange for the eye, and then a little bit of that same bright yellow washed here along the throat. Taking a look at the belly stamp, you can see that like all of the first generation Carnegie's, it has the name of the dinosaur in large uppercase print and all the other text is centered and in a smaller font. In Parasaurolophus, um, they did clear a smooth area under the stamp for that text. Um, in some of the other first generation Carnegie's the, the scale texture does go underneath but it seems like in Parasaurolophus that little smooth area was there from the start although that got more prominent obviously as they replaced this text in later versions of the mold. So moving on to the second version, we have a very, very slight difference, although if you look at them carefully, it is a noticeable difference between what I believe is the first version and the second version. And the only reason I really think this is the second version is because it's made of a lot harder plastic. I have heard uh, and read from people like Randy Knoll that as far as they know, the first Carnegie's were the really rubbery ones. Um, this one is actually real hard plastic, much harder than some of the later, um, even, you know, 2000's versions, which are known for their hard plastic. Uh, this is pretty solid. 
The um, stamp does seem to have a little bit more of a smooth area around it than the other one, which kind of supports my hunch that this came slightly later. They probably realized that this rubbery plastic was maybe not the best way to go, and then they overcompensated with some really, really hard plastic. But it does have the same kind of wash. You can see that this one does have more paint applied to the back. Uh, it seems like they probably painted by hand this stripe down the back and then just very lightly brushed a wash over the rest of it with the same color. Um, comparing them, you can see that this one has a much darker back than this one does, but it has the same bright yellow paint on the crest, the same glossy brown paint along the snout, um, and basically the same color scheme every, everywhere else. The text stamp is the same, and the only other difference besides the hardness of the plastic is the color of the plastic. You can see that this plastic is much more of a yellow color, and this one is more of a beige or off-white color. So those are the two first-generation Parasaurolophy that I have. The next one that I have in my collection is this guy right here. And this is the first one that has the classic color scheme, or at least what's approaching the classic color scheme. If you look in the 1990 um, Carnegie and Safari catalogs, you can see that already by that point they had settled on um, an olive green color scheme with um, dark green stripes retaining that yellow crest. Um, the only difference between this and some of those catalog editions are the color of the face. The one in the catalog has just a flat orange, uh, not orange, olive green face just like the neck does. Uh, now this one has white paint actually applied around the face and the addition of these spots which would stick with Parasaurolophus for quite a while. Based on some Schleich websites that I've seen, um, this one seems to have been the first edition that was uh, distributed by Schleich overseas uh, in Germany and possibly in Europe and elsewhere. Um, the one with the whitish um, around the face. I don't know if these were being actually produced by Schleich or what, which could explain some of the um, slightly different color schemes than we see in uh, other contemporary Parasaurolophus from the late 80s and early 90s. Um, I do not have the version that has the no paint uh, or at least just green paint on the face. I'd like to get that one eventually. Uh, I have seen some nice samples online. It's just that, you know, I have a ton of these Parasaurolophus and I kind of don't want to spend that much money on yet another one at this time. Uh, the belly stamp on this is the same as previous models and it still has that hard plastic from this second version um, but you can see that the plastic underneath is this whitish light gray. The next version I have is very similar. Let's move these guys back here. Very similar but you can see it's got more orange on the eye. It's got a little bit of a glossier, more nuanced color scheme with a little bit more of a yellow wash along the side. And um, it looks to be a little closer to the actual catalog uh, early photo shoot version than this one does. Um, it does have a little bit of a sloppier paint application around the mouth here, but you can see that it is characteristic of 1990 releases because there, if you can see this little paint rub here, there is dark black uh, hard plastic as a substrate on this one. And as a result of that, like some of the other models that have this style of paint, you can see that there is a little bit of cracking going on, like right here by the eye, a little cracking going on where that glossy paint tends to flake off of this hard black plastic, which didn't last too long in the Carnegie line. Once again, this one has the same belly stamp as all the previous ones. So I estimate that this is probably from around 1990. Once again, it is a little bit different from the catalog version, but like a lot of the 1990 releases, uh, the paint is a little bit more translucent than previous ones. It's a little bit more wash-like. There's more layers of this glossy um, lacquer on it that seems to be applied a little bit inconsistently. It's glossier on the back than it is on the bottom. Uh, and you can see on the back here just how those different shades of green blend into each other. And uh, for my money, this era of the Carnegie um, really had, I think, the nicest paint application. Not necessarily the nicest paint scheme, but the paint applications were really beautiful with all the different blends and washes and uh, different kinds of paint. Just to give you a quick comparison between these, once again, they are very, very similar. 
they probably came out within maybe within months of each other they were produced. Next is a mid 90s edition of the Paris Rollifist. This one probably comes from around 1993 or 1994 when Safari was focusing on probably more of their efforts producing some of the newer models like the Platyosaurus and the Dilophosaurus. And the older models, while still in production, were kind of getting the short end of the stick in terms of paint application and attention to keeping up uh, the old molds. Um, you can see, compared to the old one, this one is much less glossy, much more of a matte finish, um, actually fewer colors and more simplified color scheme on here. The sculpt is getting a little soft compared to, say, this one where the uh, definition of the scales and everything really stands out. Uh, this one is suffering a little bit of mold fatigue where the sculpt is softening. There are some areas on the bottom where the sculpt has been gradually um, damaged by repeatedly pulling um, blanks out of the mold. You can even see the evolution of this one scrape that starts right here at the edge of this side of the mold where maybe somebody was digging a tool under there to pry it out. By the early to mid 90s, that little scrape had become this massive flat spot right there. And you can see that somebody just basically was repeatedly scraping the mold to pull the blanks out. Um, this mold though is still the same mold, has only been retooled a little bit to reflect uh, the changes that they made to the belly stamp, which you can see right here. It has eliminated the words Miami, Florida, has eliminated the words made in China and added the CE mark. And obviously the biggest difference here is the color of the head. They eliminated the white face and just gave it an all yellow head. And we still have a little bit of that yellow continuing onto the throat. You can see the mold fatigue really clearly here along the mold line on the neck where it's really just starting to buckle. So this mold was in desperate need of replacement and in 1995 or so, they did replace that mold. And I don't have the original, but I have the 1997 version of the new mold. Uh, there's an older version of this, which is fully painted and has a little bit more of that same yellow wash along the sides. Um, but this is the fully updated mold. And as far as I can tell, comparing a really fresh version of the mold with this one, it has been completely resculpted, not just retooled. And uh, that is very evident in the fact that this is a lot smaller, actually, than the original Paris Rolifus. If you look at them, the torso is way slimmer on the 1997, late 90s sculpt, way fatter and rounder on the original one. You can see even the legs have been subtly resculpted to have more definition in the musculature here than just the smooth uh, contours of the legs in the old one. The pose is pretty much the same. You can see the forelimb is a little bit more bent in the new sculpt. Um, but it really was necessary just to totally redo this sculpt because of all the mold fatigue that was happening. And they took that opportunity to update it. Uh, this one does have a more dynamic, more elegant and graceful um, slimmer profile compared to the old Parasaurolophus and compared to the previous version, obviously. Um, whereas the previous version was made of uh, sort of medium gray, um, not really flexible um, vinyl. This one is made of just olive green vinyl and it only has a couple colors painted on. It's got the black on um, the stripes, it's got the yellow, and it's got like a little bit of an airbrushed yellowish orange along the side, but not too much. Otherwise it retains the same color scheme. But you can see that the belly stamp is also totally redone. I don't think I showed the belly stamp that clearly on this one, but um, the belly stamp, other than eliminating some of the text here, um, stayed centered all the way through the mid-90s. And they didn't left align it until we got to the redo in 1996 and 1997. Um, Take a look at the bend in the belly here compared to the old one. It's a little bit more pronounced too. Um, on the new 1996-1997 versions, they did even add sculpted detail to the bottom of the feet, which is kind of cool. 
Uh, overall, this one is more scientifically accurate. It's got a higher back profile compared to the original. A little bit of a wider and uh, more sharply tapered tail than the original, um, which is a little flatter too. But still, probably not the most scientifically accurate, especially when you consider that at the same time that this model started to be produced, we got our Batat Parasaurolophus, which really, in terms of scientifically uh, accurate sculpting, blows this one completely out of the water. This is obviously the newer Terra version, the repaint, um, but the original Batat um, Parasaurolophus really just did a, a number showing how showing Carnegie how it was done, and I'm a little surprised that they never actually went and responded to the Batat version by re-sculpting this again. This sculpt was in use from about 1996 all the way up through 2015, because in the mid-2000s, 10 years later, in 2007, we got the repaint of this same sculpt. So you can see that this is the same sculpt, it's got the new head, Brand new head and neck sculpt, brand new body sculpt, same muscle definition. Uh, it has been retooled a little bit. It's been sharpened a little bit from the old mold, which once again was probably getting fatigued by the time we got to 2007. And the most noticeable thing about this one is the brand new paint scheme. Um, the belly stamp is the same, but once again you can see that it's been retooled to make it a little bit sharper just like they they did in the early 90s when they went and retooled some of these uh, some of the other Carnegie's although apparently not the Parasaurolophus so there was one additional version after the 2007 uh, that I do not have which has a slightly brighter color scheme a little bit more of a bright yellow on the spots and the underside than this kind of brownish beige color um, and it's got different info stamp text which is in three lines and includes the scale. And speaking of scale, these Parasaurolla Phi are mostly 140. You can see with my ruler here. The head is about four and a half to five centimeters long. Um, the whole animal, if you measured it along the spine with a tape measure, would be about 17 to 18 centimeters in length and doing the math or plugging that into an online scale calculator you can figure that based on larger specimens of Parasaurolophus these would be about 140 and just by comparing the skulls you can see that it is about the same size as the Batat Parasaurolophus as well so the scale on this is pretty on point um, which again I'm a little surprised because they changed the scale in around 2012 um, to make this like I forget what it was, 145 or even 150 or something like that. Uh, I think this is perfectly fine for a 140 Parasaurolophus. They may just have been scaling it based on reconstructions with a longer tail. One of the most glaringly scientifically inaccurate things about this Parasaurolophus, especially compared to the Batat one, is just the size and length of the tail compared to the rest of the body. This one shows you the really good characteristically broad, long and straight um, and sort of narrow side to side hadrosaur tail and it's also got more accurate forelimbs with the little small finger little hoofs here and more of a mitten type if I can focus more of a mitten type hand compared to this one which does have fused together fingers but they're really kind of more based on the old Trachodon reconstructions from the mid 20th century. And uh, one fun fact that I did discover while researching these Parasaurolophus models was the fact that this pose is very, very similar to the classic, um, you know, 1950s and 1960s Marx Trachodon figure. And I wonder if that was intentional. Um, but even if it was, that does say something about the fact that we've got a, an homage to the Marx Trachodon that persisted from basically 1988 all the way to 2015, relatively unchanged. Um, you know, 
it's no wonder that Safari chose to update this Parasaurolophus a couple of years ago to make it more accurate and a little closer to our good friend, the Batat Parasaurolophus, which I love Safari, obviously. I'm using that hashtag in a lot of my videos, but this is still my favorite Parasaurolophus of all time. I don't think it's really been beat yet. Um, the new Safari one is nice. I haven't actually picked it up yet. I, I mean to one of these days, uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to hold a candle to my old Terra friend here. So that is my look at the evolution of the Carnegie Collection Parasaurolophus from 1988 all the way up through 2015. There they are. Thanks again for watching Jurassic Plastic. Please make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment to talk about your thoughts about these old vintage uh, Parasaurolophus replicas. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.